Say yes to new beginnings. Yes. Say yes to new beginnings. Yes. Say yes to now. All the while, all those while, you know, that you are going through those pains and challenges and everything. Was there ever a time you you, you tried uh, drugs? You know, maybe to dull your pain or to quench your sorrow and stuff like that. Uh, at all. I I'm I'm not even much of I'm a, I'm, more, I'm more of a social drinker, you know. Yes, back way back then even before I got there, I it was not my thing. It was never my thing. So uh if if I if I was exposed to that, I probably wouldn't be talking like this. You know, when you have a vices or something to latch on to, you like drinking or smoking and um, you know, drugs all those things i wasn't i wasn't open to any of those things as at okay. that time so I, how, yes so how were you able to now cope you know in the midst of all the turmoil all the ordeal all the torture all the pain and everything like the, the, that you have just painted yes that's why i said that i took one thing out of them my relationship with god it's helped strengthen my spirituality i I had a, an imaginary friend I was talking to because I had to do that. I didn't know who to trust. I didn't know who to work with. The one person that I trusted let me down. The one person that I thought I could hold on to as a friend, a father, let me down. And people around me, because a lot was happening. You know, the divide and rule, jealousy, and all of that. So I went into myself, my spirituality. I tapped into my spirituality and it's really helped and it's still helping me today. Coupled with the fact that I'm, I come from a very disciplined background, you know, a, a, a good woman raised me, my mother, very disciplined. You understand? So it's, it's a good woman raised me. My mother was a very disciplined woman, still is disciplined. God bless her. So a, a lot of things. Then at some point I reached out to my family. My mother had to badge in. My mother had to just badge in. My mother had to. My mother had, came to my rescue at some point. You know, you my uncles and uh, aunties uh, told her, you what, can't leave what, your family. What role did your parent, the, 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 I was going to ask you what role did your family play in all, all, all of that. Oh, I can't hear you. Yes, you were saying something that your mommy badged in at some point. Yeah, so you, you go ahead. Yes, um, it got to a stage because at that point I had been brainwashed into believing that my family didn't mean well for me. I should stay away from them. I wasn't allowed to even see them. So my mom would call me. I would tell them I'm not in Nigeria. Meanwhile, I'm in Nigeria. So one day my mom just, they just told me, your mother is looking for you. That was at the house I was staying in Maryland. And she said, but you say you're not in Nigeria. Here you are. Why are you running away from us? You know, I realized that each time that happens and I see, you know, it, it used to make me weak in my heart. Like what's going on? But you know, the brainwashing was so much. One day I opened up to her and I let her know what was going on, you know. And um, I started putting my foot down little by little after a while. I started putting my foot down little by little. Uh, I have to see my parents. I have to make friends. I have to go out. I have to do this, you know. I was not allowed to. I was, I was just blocked left and right. But thank God for my mom because a good woman raised me. A good woman raised me. Thank God for my mom. So what's your relationship with uh, Mr. Wonley Akimboboye currently? We have met on a number of occasions. And as Omoluabi, a proper Yoruba girl, I go on my two names to greet him. And um, yeah, he responds. There's nothing more. If he has business today, if he calls me, I'm a business woman. She says, right, the, the concert is going on somewhere. Here is your money. Can you please go? I'm there. I'm a business woman. Never say never. But I can never Thanks. go back to Atuda Entertainment. Never, I can never go back. It's not possible. No, okay. I can't go back. Even the, the ones that came after me, they, they, they ran, you know? So what, 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 why, 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 why is everybody running? Why would they, I like you going back? they were all calling me. Why? They were calling me, asking for advice. The younger ones that were, they were calling me, asking for advice. What should they do? They, they, they are tired. This is what's happening to them. So I was able to say, I, and I honestly told the ones that reached out to me, I said that platform is a good platform you know maximize it make use of that platform but do not do this do not do this do not do this you cannot fight that people boy you are too small to fight it 
You cannot be yeah, disrespecting. Yeah. You're all Yoruba girls. You understand? Uh huh. But if that platform is a, if you have people who can talk to him that he will listen to, go and talk to them. This complaint you are telling me now, go and tell those people, let them talk to him. But he has a good platform. He just needs to straight to change strategy and you know and all of that. That's what I told them. Okay. One of my friends said sometimes that for every story there are th uh, three sides your side my side and the truth what happens if mr kim Boboye says what you're saying is not the truth i know my truth i have no reason to lie against him right and he happened to me not just me two three others who have been there came out saying the same thing a mother of one of them called me some months back the woman was screaming you know that they wanted her daughter to sign a five-year contract the lawyer said no the daughter was and the woman said a lot to me and i advised her said ma you are the mother of this girl go and meet this man discuss with him i said i don't want war i don't want trouble and she said she had been there to see him she explained a lot of things to me so see if i was the only one crying wolf right it, it would have been different i'm not the only one though. there are other girls that left that were on that platform that left go and ask them the story what happened to them how were they treated the mother of that girl particularly mentioned mental torture that it was given her daughter and i laughed and i told her the story of the new york not just that other stories and i said so ma um it's like in yoruba it's um anybody you understand if you know say your charisma carry on no but if not it's between you and him you understand so all right i have to be extremely careful see the man has a good platform i will say it any day anytime the man has a fantastic platform it's just those other aspects on the on the old style you you're, not, you're, you're, you're not being explicit uh, explicit enough about the other aspects okay but now now now, now let me ask you um a question on the whole, how would you sum up your experience with uh, Mr. Kim, uh, Akim Boboy and the Akunda Entertainment? How would you sum up the experience? To be honest, I don't know how to describe it though. I don't know. One word don't describe this thing, you know. If I were to come back again to this life, I won't go there. I won't go there. <laughs> A few other things. Now, after some time, you know, Ara got uh, married to Prince Nuruddin Olaleko Salim. The, the, the marriage panned up. What, what happened again? So what happened? Why did the marriage fail? Now, um, you see, being locked up for, being locked up for that long, I locked up with reality with, with what was going on out there. Prince Nuruddin was um, my child, uh, okay, not childhood, um i dated him when we were in our early 80s i mean sorry early 20s sorry but at that time he left nigeria and then i went on to other things and i became ara and by the time he came back the same person i thought it was the same person you know people change right but at that time there was pressure i wanted to live at the entertainment there was pressure on me to get married because I was I wanted to make a baby. And the different sisters and men that had the privilege of having access to me knew, I felt to myself, they only know Ara. They don't know Ara Lola Sharifa. And if they were to marry me, their expectations would be the fantasy Ara. So I said to myself, this person knew me before I became Ara. And at that time, he was the only one that could withstand Akim Boboy. Because he was coming. Akim Boboy didn't like him. Not one day. And then he, he noticed that I was programmed. So he would tell me, when Akim Boboy would call me, he would be there. He would tell me to drop the call. He would say, This is what he's expecting you to say. Don't say this, you go this way. So when that started happening, Akim Boboy knew something was up. Who is teaching her? He knew somebody was talking to me. You know, because he had me. He had me. He figured out already. He had me programmed. So I was like a robot. So by the time this guy came into the picture, it was like my support system. So I decided Jason we went back and by the time my contract was expiring, so the show in fact had an event in France. So he wanted me to come. I just went to South and everything. 
I, I literally snitched out of Nigeria. I remember the day I went to the French embassy to get my visa. Hell left me. One of the lonely things. Everybody were looking for me because Mr. One of the lonely was working for me. They were looking for me all over the place. But I didn't let them know because I was ready to go. But I can tell you today, it's not for God, it's not for my ex. I wouldn't have had a job. I was looking for that somebody to push me, to say, look, and this is it for me. Oh, well, you know, he has been a life out of the front that I was not aware of a lot of things. So by the time I, I had my son in the US, came back to Nigeria, a lot was already happening, you know, in our relationship. I don't want to talk about this because of my son and all of that, but one thing I know is that God used him to take me out of that place. So by the time things started going wrong, I realized that we were still legally married. So our marriage was annulled. The marriage was officially annulled because there was an existing marriage that was not known to me. But I can tell you, today we are very good friends. We talk, of course, we talk. Our son is 13 years old. We talk from time to time. We have a good I mean, relationship because of our son. You know, I'm not the kind of woman that will turn the child against his father, God forbid. You know, and God used him to bring me out of that thing. But that marriage didn't work based on that. Yeah, he begged me to come back after him, everything, you know. He begged me, he did everything, but I told him I'd already moved on. And I told him to you know, a lot of things. And I, I begged him, I said, see, let's remain friends. I cannot fuck back. Let's remain friends. And friends, not friends are uh, with benefit or without benefit. What, what, what do they call it? Just for the sake of our child, you know, not standard people, you start saying, hey, what kind of friend is that? I'm with you.